Who just needs to start a screen up? <laughs> we just turn to the back of the altar or we go to the front of the altar? We go to the front. Go wherever he wants. Please Let's stand the for the processional. Healing river of the spirit, bathe the wounds that living brings. Plunge our pain, our sin, our sadness, deep beneath your sacred springs. Weary from the restless searching that has lured us from your side. We discover in your presence peace the world cannot provide. Wellspring of the healing spirit, stream that flows to bring release. As we gain ourselves, our senses, may our lives reflect your peace. Grateful for the flood that heals us, may your church enact your grace. As we meet both friend and stranger, may we see your Savior's face. Called each by name, we come into God's presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Peace be with you. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. Teresa of Avila, known by some as Big Teresa, often said that weather is inevitable, it's as inevitable in nature as it is in our spiritual lives. So we have clouds today, but we know the clouds don't last. There is a sun. Sometimes our sins, and the sins of others against us cloud our vision of God's glory. We don't always see it, but we know it's there, and we know God loves us. So we ask forgiveness for the times when we've forgotten that God keeps coming back and that he wants the sun of his mercy to shine on us all. Lord Jesus, You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with the divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that we, your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphyla. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel 
and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of these people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as inheritance, and at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then he asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior, forever. 
My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, he ate my food and he raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever receives the one I send, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you talked to St. Catherine of Siena lately? She's available. In fact, we celebrate her, uh, her feast day today, Catherine of Siena, doctor of the church, who at a very, very early age had an incredible awareness of God's presence in her life. And yet, time and time again, ran into resistance simply because she trusted that. An amazing thing. But uh, from her very early youth, she, uh, some might call this a mystical experience, but she had this sense of being somehow or other possessed by God, fully well aware that to be possessed is often a term that is used for diabolical forces. In fact, sometimes the experience of those who have suffered abuse, survivors, and others who might have suffered from various forms of violence, and, and they're all connected because it's all part of the same uh, cycle of evil, whereby human beings would be seen as objects to be used for somebody else's desires, to be eaten instead of respected. And 
She herself lived in a world that was quite complex, even though it was the 1400s, I believe it was. Uh, there was a lot of political turmoil going on. There was a lot of corruption. Uh, she knew bad bishops, bad priests, bad popes. Now, there's nothing that would lead us to believe that in her childhood she didn't have good parenting. Her father was a dyer, a, a merchant, a simple merchant in Siena. And much of her life she spent not very far from his place of business, although in her young life she did find herself traveling, but not because she herself had a particular desire to wander, but because God led her and she trusted where God would lead her. And it led her into very unsafe places, into circumstances that were, for a young woman like that, Oh, just to put it down to earth very practically, she decided at a young age that somehow or other she would never marry. Now, how she knew this at the age of six or seven, God only knows. But she decided, and, some, and maybe it wasn't so much that she didn't want to marry uh, somebody else. It was just that really nobody was really going to be good enough for her it, because she saw God as her father and Jesus as her brother and she wanted to give everything over to them. And she was very well aware that human beings disappoint. In fact, she specifically said this. All earthly fathers are flawed. And certainly we know that about our friendships. No matter how good a friend may be, no matter how good a friend we may want to be to one another, or how good a parent, or for that matter, how good a child, we know that we're going to fail in that. And sometimes that gets us down. Because we get caught up in these failures, in these, this brokenness of humanity that goes right back to the, to the fall. But her secret was not, not to deny that. But her secret was to recognize one basic truth. Satan has lost. God has won. Jesus is our Savior. Everyone's Savior. And even though that hasn't been accepted or played its way out in every human heart, not to worry. Because the Jesus who came to rescue the human race is a Jesus that comes to us personally and meets us exactly where we are. I know sometimes that we all develop this idea, and, and I'm not going to blame anybody or any institution for it. And somehow or another, if we want to come to the altar that we have to somehow be at our Sunday best, that we have to feel good, that we have to feel we're worthy and ready. And there's a certain, I suppose, natural truth in that. You know, God is holy. We are not. In fact, at one time, uh, St. Teresa heard the Lord telling her, don't forget that I am and you are not. <laughs> but God didn't tell that to her to put her down. But simply that she not forget that God's in charge and that all will be well because God loved her. She had this incredible sense that in spite of her smallness, in spite of her child, childishness, that somehow God was not actually repelled by that, but attracted by it. As a matter of fact, it was precisely her need, her neediness, her desire for that presence of God that drew God to her. And if we look at the pages of scriptures, we'll see that happen time and time again, how Jesus was actually drawn to those who the world despised or who themselves may have had terrible, terrible tragedies and failures in their own lives. The woman at the well, the woman caught in the act of adultery, the lepers who were outcast from society. And there's so many forms of leprosy, people that are cast away by society, thrust into the margins, we know that. We know that spiritually, physically, that's true. Sometimes there may even be a part of our own lives that we are ashamed of, or we've been made to feel ashamed of by somebody else. But God is not ashamed of us. God is not ashamed to draw near. Jesus comes to us exactly where we are. So if that takes a, an act of faith, that simply I'm going to believe, well, then that's where we've got to start. Whether I feel it or not, <clears throat> Whether I find it credible or not, that's what God said. I'm going to believe it. God loves me. God loves me. The nun used to tell us in school, and I never, I never forgot it, that Jesus would have died for you and me 
if you or I were the only person in the world. That's the gospel truth. And that's why today, all of us, wherever we are in our lives, wherever we are on our journey of faith, even if we feel we have no faith, or we feel we've lost the, the, the path, or if we're here because we're praying for somebody that we feel may have gone astray or been led astray or been so wounded that they cannot pick themselves up again, that Jesus comes to us. We heard the gospel today. You know, it's St. John's gospel, and it's the passage that follows right after Jesus did something extremely shocking. Remember, he got down at the Last Supper on his hands and knees and washed the feet of his disciples, assuming the position of a slave. No, 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 no Jewish rabbi would do something like this, would sub subordinate himself, would come down so low. And it shocked all of the apostles, especially Peter, you know, who said, I, 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 you will never wash my hands or feet. Now, we can go into Peter's psychology and all those things. But the reality was that Jesus said, you don't understand. If you don't understand I have to do this, then you don't know me. And you really can't have any part of my friendship. Because in order to be my friend, you have to accept me as I am. And what I'm telling you is that I am a God that suffers. I am a God that gets down on his hands and knees. I am a God, you know, sometimes we talk about God as the man upstairs. Nothing could be further from the truth. If anything, God is a God who's in the muck, who's with us where we are in our pain, in our suffering, in our sinfulness. For these are the things that Jesus came for, to lift us up and to pull us away from that. And Jesus also gave each and every one of us a command that if we're going to truly be his disciples, then we too have to recognize that we at times will be humiliated. Because Jesus not only humbled himself, he says, this is something that I take upon myself. It's not something I have to do, but I'm doing it because I want to be close to you. I want you to know that I am with you. I want you to know I know your suffering, your pain, your brokenness, your questions, your anxiety, that gaping wound that needs to be filled with something. And I am going to fill it with my love. I am going to be your food. I am going to be your divine physician, if you will. I am going to be your friend. And I will not let you down. And that mystical, some people will accuse, maybe that's the wrong word for it, will accuse Teresa, will accuse Catherine of being a mystic, because people don't normally think this way, right? But she recognized that that was her reality. Her reality was recognizing that her identity was not based upon what others told her she was was not based upon things that just happened to her or where she was born or what her age was or what her father did or didn't do or what his wealth was and so on. No, it was determined by God's personal choice of her as his beloved daughter. I would almost say that St. Teresa, that's, I, I keep saying St. Teresa, but pardon me for throwing saints' names around, but if you have any relationship with Big Teresa or Little Teresa, the Holy Flower, she's another one. But I would recommend St. Catherine of Siena as a particularly important saint to go to if in any way you have suffered from the scourges of abuse or you know somebody that has. Because she has a way of focusing us on what really will heal us and of moving our minds away from what pulls us down. And it's not a denial of evil. This is not denial of the need for apology and for healing and for justice and for remedies in human terms. But it is also a call for us to recognize that our true identity never lies in what has happened to us or what others have told us we are or even what we ourselves may think we are. We know a lot of people today struggle with identity issues, you know. And a lot of times we hear that the task of every human being is to get in touch with yourself, whatever that is, and to assert who you are and to be that person. I must be me. You know, and, and there's a certain truth in that. 
But there is a problem if we identify that only with our limited vision or our egos, or for that matter, our ids and superegos, that the true identity of every human being is deeper than anything we know about ourselves or anything about our biology or our history, well, that's a part of it. But our true identity is in how God sees us and why God created us. Do you know that before you or I were born, you and I were known and awaited for by God? There is not a human being alive that exists now or ever will exist or, or, or has existed that God has not willed to be into being. God wants your life and my life with all of its flaws, with all of its mistakes, with all of its pain and anxiety. He wants you. And not only does he want us here and now to accept that as the truth of our lives, that we're here because God loves us and wants us, but also because he has an eternity prepared for us, that we are not meant only for this world alone. We are meant for eternity. And everything that happens to us, or everything we experience, and everything that we learn through trial and error is all part of this process, this journey, by which God is leading us ultimately to his divine heart. And that divine heart, that loving heart, that beating heart that is the center of the universe is here with us today in our midst. I mentioned that the saints are very available, and sometimes it may be a little bit difficult to go to God directly. You know, Bernard Herring told me one time, he was a great moral theologian, and I was very privileged to study under him back in the 70s. And uh, we were discussing Eric Fromm's book, maybe some of you came across it at some point, The Art of Love. He wrote very beautifully about how to be a friend, how, what love truly is, and even though he didn't come from our, our tradition. And uh, I remember we were discussing it, and, and, and if you forgive my imitation of his German accent, Bernard Herring said to me, uh, you know, Erich Fromm could never trust and believe there was a God, because every time he prayed to God, he saw his grandfather on the throne. <laughs> apparently, apparently, he had a very, very severe Swiss grandfather. And he used to beat the you-know-what out of him. And it, it, it really scarred Eric. And yet, now here's a man that wrote about what love was. And yet he couldn't be reconciled with his own grandfather. But we can understand that from our point of view of faith. We can understand how at times it is almost impossible, if not totally impossible, for us to be reconciled with somebody that has hurt us, has abused us, has, has abandoned us so deeply. But we still have God our loving Father, who is the true Father of our souls. And we have Jesus, our brother, who shows us the human face of God and the depths to which God will, will go in order to make it clear to us. He wants us. He loves us. I would even say he needs us because God's heart burns for ours in a way that it's hard for us to under... Well, isn't this God? God's a divinity. God, God doesn't need anything. It's, but remember the nature of God, our God, that has been revealed to us, is that God is, is, is like family. You know, this is a very personal God. And God is always... You know, I've, I've heard God described as three persons crazy about each other, revolving around each other for all eternity, and somehow or other wants to include us all in that wonderful dance. The love between the Father and the Son is so strong that it generates a person, the Holy Spirit. St. Catherine believed that constantly that Holy Trinity was with her and in her heart. And um, maybe that's one reason that we call her a doctor of the church, because whether she realized it or not, that's Catholic teaching. The indwelling of the Holy Trinity. Can you believe that? that our hearts open to God are as sacred as the tabernacle. That the same Jesus, the same God that we receive on this altar is the same God that dwells in our hearts. Oh Lord, I am not worthy. That's true. We couldn't make this up. 
because we just recognize that that's not our experience, perhaps, of ourselves, let alone other human beings. But it's the truth. You remember that uh, this famous scene, and I think it was a few good men, you know, when Jack Nicholson, the officer, says, you know, to the court, when asked to come up and confess, you know, you can't handle the truth. Can we handle that truth? Is it too much for us? Is it too much for us to believe we are loved? Too much to believe we are forgiven? Too much to believe that Jesus comes to each and every one of us for a personal encounter, and he will not let us go until we say, Lord, I am not worthy. Amen. There is nothing that God will not do for us, no prayer God will not answer. So now from our hearts, we offer our prayers of petition. We pray for all victims of abuse around the world, within the church and beyond, that the healing spirit of God move among them and within them, and that the church, the people of God, be filled with the same healing spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For church leaders, parents, mentors, teachers, coaches, and all those who work with children and young people, that they may look after them with the watchful eye of the shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For families who are the first to show God's love, that they may have the necessary support to provide safe and nurturing environments for children and young people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered abuse, that they may experience God's profound love for them and God's healing powers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who provide help for the abused, counselors, therapists, and advocates that they may act with wisdom and compassion in their healing ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those affected by abuse in any way, that they may have the courage to tell their story, to reach for healing, we pray for the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Tender and merciful Father, hear our prayers. Let the love that streams from your heart touch the hearts of all who pray here today and heal them. We offer you these prayers of petition, those that we've spoken with our lips, as well as those that lie in our hearts, perhaps too deep for words. We know that you will answer them as is best for us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 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 Lord 
Jesus Christ, you are the wine of peace. Poured into hearts once broken and where dryness sleeps. Where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond despair. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out our love. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to your feast at which the rich and powerful have become the least. Where we survive on others in our human greed, you walk among us begging for your every need. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the glorious name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring to it experience on this earth, the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for our failing health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased, confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, the orders of bishops, priests, and deacons, those in pastoral leadership, the religious, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For Holy Communion, we just please ask that you follow the directions of our ministers of hospitality who will help you come up to communion in a socially distant way.
cup of blessing, blood of Christ the Lord. At this table, the last shall be thirst. Pudere servir, pork your dresses and Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 If you would kindly be seated for just a moment. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Frederick Jones. I'm the assistance coordinator through the Diocese of Albany. Um, I'm available um, later today um, and whenever um, anybody needs additional assistance. Um, as a victim, as a survivor, as a parent, as a friend, um, you don't have to go through this journey alone. Um, I'm here and I can be a support in whatever way you need. So I will be available after and um, I also have my contact information um, that I can provide um, if you'd like to speak further. So thank you. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Please bow your head for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he who by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Faith and hope and love
of time. 